Hi, in this video, let's focus on few additional topics. Starting with, why do you see a white line in case of composite restoration? So it could be because of space creation between the composite as well as the tooth structure, or it could be even because of micro fracture within the marginal enamel, which can be caused either by inadequate etching and bonding of affected area, or because of high intensity fast light curing resulting in excessive polymerization, or it could also be because of traumatic finishing techniques. Moving on to the next topic, what is the lens used in case of myopia? So myopia also called as short sightedness. So a myopic person has clear vision when looking at objects close to them, but distant objects will appear blurred. I mean, most of us do have myopia, isn't it? So this is because the light is focused in front of retina and being too far forward in the eye, things in the distance look blurred. So how do you correct it? By using concave lens. So short sightedness is corrected using a concave lens, which is placed in front of a myopic eye, moving the image back to the retina and making it clearer. Now moving on to the next topic. Anticonvulsant drug adverse effects. So uh, there is a question asking you uh, various adverse effects related to an anticonvulsant drug which includes uh, hirsutism, gingival hyperplasia, osteomalacia, etc. So if you look into phenytoin, right, so various adverse effects which are given in the question match to that of the adverse effects of phenytoin. So as you can see, at therapeutic levels there can be gum hypertrophy, hirsutism, hypersensitivity reactions, megaloblastic anemia, osteomalacia, etc. And at higher doses, right, dose related toxicity, there can be cerebellar and vestibular manifestations, drowsiness, epigastric pain, nausea and vomiting, fall in blood pressure, cardiac arrhythmias, etc. Right? So phenytoin would be the more appropriate answer. Now moving on to the next question, palatal mucosa thickness. So if you look into the image, uh, we have varying thickness of palatal mucosa. Overall, the thickness of palatal mucosa increases from canine to second molar areas and incites farther away from the gingival margin. Just, just keep this in mind. However, we have an exception like in case of first molar area corresponding to line C, there is significantly thinner mucosa which could be because of presence of palatal root of first molar. And also the maximal mucosal thickness is corresponding to line D of second molar. So this presentation is based on a reference article. So see if uh, this is helping you in finding out the answer or if you need anything in specific, do let me know. I'll update that accordingly in the description part of the video, right? Moving on to the next topic. In case of intrusion of tooth, when do you go for extraction? So we have criteria as you can see. So we have intrusion which is graded as grade 1, 2 and 3. In case of grade 1, there is mild partial intrusion in which more than 50% of crown is visible. Whereas in case of grade 2, there is moderate partial intrusion in which less than 50% of the crown is visible. In case of grade 3, it is severe or complete intrusion. So usually in case of grade 2 and grade 3, we go for extraction or we indicate extraction. So just keep this in mind. Okay. Moving on to the next topic. Listgarten Jones in case of ENAC, acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. So as you can see, we have uh, different layers or uh, four different layers in specific which are described from the most superficial to the deepest layers of ENAC by Listgarten at all way back in 1965. So the first layer you can see the bacterial area with a superficial fibrous mesh composed of degenerated epithelial cells, leukocytes, etc. followed by a neutrophil rich zone, followed by necrotic zone and this is followed by spirochetal infiltration zone. So let me know what the question is in specific. We'll update that in the description accordingly. Right? Moving on to the next topic, perecision. To what percentage does it reduce the relapse of rotation? I think that was the question. So perecision is effective in what percentage of rotation cases? So according to the reference given in evidence-based orthodontics edited by Huang, it's mentioned that 30% is the case. So perecision may reduce the amount of rotational relapse by up to 30% with no adverse effects on the health of periodontal ligament. Okay, so 30%. Now moving on to the next topic. MMP9, I think that was asked. So MMP9, so as you can see some literature pertaining to MMP9, it is first termed as type 4 collagenase or gelatinase B, right? Also, you can find out more information about matrix metalloproteinases and uh, various other types of MMPs and their uh, role in physiology, okay? You can just review this literature in your free time. 
So MMP9 is a type 4 collagenase or gelatinase B. Now moving on to the next topic, a number of bacterial cells in endodontic infection was that asked because I found this in one of the comments. So as you can see the number of cells estimated right the average number of bacterial cells in endodontic infection is around 10 power 3 to 10 power 8 per root canal see if it is helpful for you now moving on to the next topic lymphatic vessels are absent in so if you review literature it's clearly mentioned that only a few regions including the epidermis of skin mucous membranes bone marrow and central nervous system are free of lymphatic capillaries right next topic temperature regulation in which part of the brain so hypothalamus as you can see in the flow chart so hypothalamus the body temperature is regulated by hypothalamus which sets the normal range of body temperature so under physiological conditions the set point is 37 degrees centigrade and also hypothalamus has two centers heat loss center and also heat gain center right moving on to the final topic rima glottidis so what is it and where is it present so as you can see in the image rima glottidis it is a potential space or it's an opening between the true vocal cords and arytenoid cartilages of larynx as evident in the illustration right so these are some of the topics which i wanted to highlight in this video and you have any additional keywords questions or options do let me know we'll update them accordingly in the description part of each video or if necessary we'll get back with a new video i hope it's clear so wish you all the best love you all